Hi, in this video we are going to teach you how to do tuberculosis testing in cattle. As you likely know, tuberculosis is a respiratory disease caused by the bacteria Mycobacterium bovis. It causes granulomatous abscesses, also known as tubercles, in the lungs. With testing and eradication strategies, the prevalence of this disease has been greatly reduced in the U.S. However, it still exists and testing is still prudent to maintain the low prevalence and limit spread. Its zoonotic potential also increases concern with this disease in our livestock species. TB testing must be performed by a licensed and accredited veterinarian. TB testing is a multi-step process and it's important to realize that this testing does require pre-planning. Although TB testing is similar among species, it is important to note that subtle differences do exist between testing among different species and different accreditation statuses may be required for testing different species of animals. Today, in this video, we are going to focus on the accreditation requirements necessary for TB testing in cattle. The California Department of Food and Agriculture created this detailed flowchart outlining specifics of the testing process. As you can see, there is not a single test to diagnose an animal with TB. It is important for you and your clients to understand that testing process is complex and that a responder to the caudal fold test, the test that you will be doing as an accredited veterinarian, does not indicate, nor should it be interpreted as, a positive animal. Any responder will need to be retested by the state or federal veterinarian with additional tests to confirm or rule out disease. In rare cases, animals may even need to be sacrificed to look for TB lesions on necropsy. The vast majority of responders are false responders. Antibodies to other more common diseases such as Yoni's disease caused by Mycobacterium avium subspecies paratuberculosis and other mycobacterial diseases can cause false responders and hopefully will be confirmed negative by additional testing. But if this is confusing, as an accredited veterinarian, unless you end up becoming a state or federal veterinarian, all you really need to know is the caudal tail fold test. If the animal is a responder, note, I didn't say positive. If the animal is a responder, then you must call the state vet and they will take over from here. If it is negative, then no further action is required. Today in this video, we are going to go over the details that are necessary for performing the caudal tail fold test, the test that you will be doing as a licensed and accredited veterinarian after you graduate. Let's go over what you will need to perform the caudal tail fold test. First of all, you will need bovine purified protein derivative. Basically, this is tuberculin antigen. It is basically the protein from the Mycobacterium bovis that has been purified, so it cannot in and of itself cause disease, but it resembles the bacteria, and so the body thinks that this is basically tuberculosis. So if the animal has antibodies to tuberculosis, then it should mount a response, an inflammatory response, to the purified protein derivative. Next, you will need a 1cc, also known as a TB syringe. And finally, you will need some 26 or 27 gauge, short, so around 3 eighths of an inch, needle. The caudal fold tuberculin test, again, the test that you will be doing as an accredited veterinarian, involves the intradermal injection of 0.1 or one-tenth of a mil of USDA bovine purified protein derivative, also known as PPD, tuberculin, into either the right 
or the left side of the caudal tail fold. It involves reading of the test by visual observation and palpation, 72 plus or minus six hours following injection by the same accredited veterinarian that performed the injection. Any response is considered a responder and does not necessarily indicate active tuberculosis infection. However, it does require reporting to the state or federal veterinarian who will conduct additional testing to rule out or confirm active infection. So I think that pretty much covers the basics of tuberculosis and tuberculosis testing in cattle. Let's review some of the major points. First of all, how we're going to actually test is we're testing for the antibodies by injecting a very small amount of tuberculin antigen within the skin, so an intradermal injection, not to be confused with a subcutaneous injection, but within the skin of the caudal tail fold. If the animal has antibodies to tuberculosis, so if she has been exposed to tuberculosis, but keep in mind some other related diseases may actually cause them to be a false responder. But if they have antibodies, they should mount an inflammatory response at that caudal tail fold, which we will read in 72 plus or minus six hours later. All right, now, Let's head out to the barn and see how this is actually done. This is NJ here. And first of all, I just want to show you what the caudal tail folds are. And if you look from the rear of the cow, you can see these two little folds that run right up from the pelvis up the tail. And that's the caudal tail fold. That is where we're going to do the intradermal injections for the, for the TB testing. You can pick either the right or the left caudal tail fold. It doesn't matter, but it is important that you remember which one that you do. We are going to take a tenth of a mil of tuberculin antigen and we're going to do an intradermal injection. So it's not going to be a sub-Q injection. It's not under the skin, but it's actually within the, the tissue planes of the, of the skin. If there's a lot of manure or dirt or debris on the tail, we can clean that off. It's advised actually not to use alcohol because alcohol could cause some skin reaction, which could be interpreted as a, as a reactor. So to do the intradermal injection, the needle will have to be directed fairly parallel to the caudal tail fold skin. If the cow moves around after inserting the, the needle and syringe, actually letting go and allowing the cow to move is advantageous to avoid actually pulling the, the needle out of the skin. So we're using a 3 8 inch needle to do the intradermal injection. We're taking the needle all the way to its depth and backing it out ever so slightly, and then injecting the tenth of a mil of tuberculin antigen. Because there's not very much room for fluid to go when you're actually doing a proper intradermal injection, after you inject the tenth of a mil of antigen, you should be able to palpate a small little wheel or a small little bump that's created by even the small amount of fluid that's actually injected within the tissue planes of the skin. If you inject subcutaneously instead of intradermally, you will probably not feel this small little wheel produced by such a small volume of fluid in a fairly large capacity subcutaneous space. And this is why the angle of the needle is really important to achieve a true intradermal injection. If the angle of the needle is too great, the needle will actually go through the skin and you will be injecting into the subcutaneous space instead of intradermally. So you have a fairly tight window to read the test. The test must be read at 72 plus or minus 6 hours after injection 
of the PPD tuberculin antigen. If you injected it, you must be available to read the test. Therefore, a little pre-planning is necessary before you do the injection. You read the test by visual inspection and palpation of the area. Any abnormal reaction makes the animal a responder and responders are reported to the state or federal veterinarian. The USDA APHIS website has more detailed information on tuberculosis testing in cattle. I hope you found this video useful and I thank you for listening.